Hello, my presentation is entitled Humanitarian Leadership in Urban Communities, an exploratory study on the role of community leaders in humanitarian coordination during the COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. I'm Dr. Maria Carina Salandria and I'm from the University of Santo Tomas. This project is being funded by the Center for Human Rights and Humanitarian Studies of Brown University. My team's main objective is to document the narratives of community leaders as humanitarian actors during the pandemic. It is our hope that through the results of this exploratory study, we will be able to identify potential development points that could address key challenges affecting the equitable delivery of services to the marginalized sectors in the country. This lecture is divided into five parts, determining the current status of pandemic impact in the Philippines, governance and its intersection with humanitarian actors, the subaltern communities, the rise of local humanitarian actors, and the challenges at hand. Today, the country recorded its highest single day tally of COVID-19 cases while running the longest lockdown in the world since this pandemic has started. Apart from the nearly 2% death rate and 656,000 total positive cases, this pandemic has been more than a biological or health issue. In a country that was already experiencing a downward trend in GDP prior to the pandemic, the protracted quarantine measures have caused job loss and further dipping of the country's GDP. How do these numbers translate to the daily experiences of Filipinos? These numbers tell a lot of things, from loss of household income, to mental health crisis, to increase in gender-based violence, and to unrest. As early as June 2020, the Philippine government's response to the pandemic has been highly and widely criticized for varying reasons, which include denialism, non-inclusive decision-making process, a militarized response to a health crisis, a dysfunctional relationship between the national and local government units, and the raging drug war and anti-communist campaign. All these issues impacted the degree by which international and national civilian humanitarian actors related to state actors and its humanitarian workers. The strong presence of uniformed personnel at every street intersection to enforce the lockdown has affected the extent of humanitarian interventions from non-residents of the area. This aggravated the experiences of marginalization of subaltern communities, especially those which were at the center of the outbreak of cases. Three communities were invited to participate in this project. These communities are situated in the National Capital Region's highly populated areas, and in this case, the biggest informal settlements. Prior to the pandemic, these communities have developed organizations that could forward the members' aspirations to the government and other entities. Resource poor and under the threat of eviction, these communities have long learned to collaborate with humanitarian organizations towards the attainment of their goals. However, due to the stringent lockdown policies, these collaborations were either put on hold or refrained. The preliminary results of our project highlighted the unprecedented rise of community leaders as humanitarian actors within their own areas from feeding programs to information campaign and assistance on securing quarantine pass, community leaders have taken on the lead of supporting the most vulnerable in their areas. 
they have also assisted local government units in the processing and distribution of the social amelioration package for vulnerable households. In areas where there were intensive military presence for stricter enforcement of the lockdown, community leaders have taken on the role of assisting the officers in managing the public. By being the first responders to violators of quarantine protocols, the leaders were able to save their community members from being fined or jailed. As one of our key informants said, it is better that we catch them before the military gets to them. This orientation is a clear example of how the leaders have also become pacifiers of potential conflict between uniformed personnel and the community members. With regard to collaborating with civilian humanitarian organizations, the community leaders have sought their logistical and financial support to fund their programs during the pandemic. Some of the identified civilian humanitarian organizations which helped these leaders attain their programmatic goals during this pandemic include universities, faith-based organizations, corporate-based extensions, and other private entities. There are four main challenges on humanitarian coordination that were identified by our participants. The first is institutional recognition. This relates to the status of the community organization as a registered or documented organization. In most cases, access to support from more established humanitarian organizations would require such documentation. Apart from their lack of resources to have their organization registered, the knowledge on organizing and subsequently registering remain key drivers of their exclusion. Another challenge is on program management. With overlapping roles ranging from household tasks to organizational commitments, the leaders have experienced difficulties in ensuring consistency in programmatic implementation. In the case of the feeding program that a woman's organization implemented, the quality of meals were not easily sustained as the roster of volunteers was so tentative due to home emergencies and livelihood demands. The third challenge is on access to state mechanisms. This refers to having sustainable and active engagement with state actors and institutions in addressing their community's needs during periods of disaster. Their lack of knowledge of state mandated processes, which is exacerbated by the gap in their technological capacity, have hindered them from communicating their aspirations. Finally, challenges related to leadership and accountability were identified. As community leaders are often chosen based on perceived trustworthiness derived from social capital, accountability for decisions made and usage of funding become a challenge. In most cases, the need to maintain solidarity within the organization impedes critical evaluation of a leader's performance. This project aims to be a source of baseline information for the development of training materials, which would strengthen the capacity for humanitarian action and coordination among community leaders to respond to hazards affecting their communities. As we continue with our discussions with the participants of this study in, in the coming months, my team and I hope to collaboratively develop these learning modules and training plans with the key stakeholders of this project. The photo you're seeing here is from the first training that the members of the research team and our community collaborators had. Our goal here is to have an actual participatory action research where in community members are going to identify the key challenges they face as humanitarian coordinators, develop the modules and training materials that would help them 
and eventually train the trainers for this process. Thank you.